Okay, in this lesson, we're going to get used to your calculator and make uh, sure that all of your settings are correct. In our study of trigonometry, we're going to measure angles and degrees, so we're going to make sure that your, ang your angle measurements are set in degrees on your calculator. Radians are used for the study of calculus, so that's going to be a later discussion. All right. So if you uh, open up your calculator and you don't know where you are on the calculator, always just start by pressing the home button up there on the top right. Once you have that screen, in order to access settings, press the numbers 5 on the keypad followed by 2. That avoids having to scroll down to find your choices. So we access settings and then we had document settings. Um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that that angle measurement in the second box is set to degrees. So pull that one down and set it to degrees, not radians. Then, in order to make sure that your calculator is rounding the way that we want it to, um, where it says display digits up at the top, you want to pick that one and you want to pull that menu down and set it on fix 3. Do not set it on float 3, set it on fix 3. That's going to round all of your answers so that they have three places after the decimal point in the answer. Um, that's going to save you a lot of trouble on rounding, so choose fix 3. Once you have fix 3 and degrees up at the top in doc document settings, you can press OK. If your calculator has a button that says Make Default on some of the older operating systems, it may say that, then press Make Default. All right, so in order to access our trig and inverse trig functions on your calculator, we're going to use the trig button to the left of the 7 key. In order to get started in a calculator uh, scratch pad, you're going to want to press the letter A for a scratch pad and open one up from the home screen. All right, so I'm going to press the trig button and I'm going to choose that first uh, first trig function sign and enter 30. And that'll give us example 1a, sine of 30 degrees. Press enter and it's rounded that to 0. 0.5. 500. It's actually exactly 0 0.500 or one half. That's one that we could have found without a calculator. All right, next let's try 3 times tangent of 52. There is a times in between those, but you don't have to type it because the calculator understands implied multiplication. So just press 3 and then use the trig button to find tan and then inside the parentheses press 52 and press enter. The value of 3 times the tangent of 52 degrees is 3.840. Alright, for the next one we're going to need a fraction. So um, in order to produce a fraction you're going to want to press the control button and then divide. That gives us that um, horizontal fraction bar which is going to be really important that we use. And so type 7 on the top, use your arrow down button to get to the denominator, and then trig, select cosine, and 43 inside the parentheses, and then enter. And that's 9.571. All right, in D, we're typing in 5 times, but you don't have to t press the times uh, button, and then trig, select tangent, and then 80. Even though it's 80 degrees, we don't have to type degrees because the calculator is understanding that angles are measured in degrees. So this one was 28.356. All right, in E we have 50 times the cosine of 178 and that's going to be negative 49.970. That shouldn't be surprising 
that that's a negative value because remember we found out that when an angle is in quadrant 2 its cosine is negative. Alright in F we have 43 times the tangent of 87 degrees and that's a really large value. The tangent is that um, ratio of opposite to adjacent and when we're at an 87 degree angle you know the opposite side is going to be much much larger than the adjacent side. All right, in G we have to make a fraction so control and divide produces that fraction. 9 on the top use your arrow button to cursor down to get to the denominator and then type 2 times the sine of 15 and press enter. We want to make sure that you're able to do some complex calculations by typing in the entire expression and that's what this is all about. Alright, last one. Control divide for a fraction and then 3 cursor down to get to the denominator 5 times the cosine of 94 degrees and that is negative 8.601. Again, we had an obtuse angle there, right? Something, an angle that would be in quadrant 2. Cosine is negative when we're in quadrant 2. All right, the last four are inverse functions. Remember, those find angles. So we'll do an inverse. So in order to uh, get the inverse menu, that's on the bottom of that trig menu. Sine inverse of control divide 3 over 5 and enter. That's giving us an angle measure so that's going to give us 36.870 degrees. Alright, in uh, J we have a cosine inverse so that's cosine, oops, I pressed cosine by mistake, let me delete that using the delete key up there over top of the book and go back to trig menu cosine inverse was what I wanted and then we have a fraction so control divide and we want negative 1 over 2 make sure you're using the negative key and not the minus key they're going to be different um, so cosine inverse of negative 1 half is 120.000 degrees this is actually um, an exact value. And you could have found that one on your own. All right, last, uh, last couple. Tangent inverse of 5. So we'll go to our trig menu, find tangent inverse, and then press the number 5. That gives us 78.690 degrees. Again, can't emphasize enough. When we do an inverse tangent, inverse cosine, inverse sine, we are finding an angle, so it's appropriate to put degrees on those measures. All right, last one. We have a sine inverse of control divide for a fraction, 3 over 2. Now we get an error, and we didn't do anything wrong. It's just that this value is undefined. Now let's see if we can kind of get an idea about why this this particular value is undefined. Um, this means we are looking for an angle where the sine of theta is equal to 3 over 2. Let's remember something about the sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And the opposite side should not be larger than the hypotenuse. Now, when we studied quadrantal angles in Unit 1, we saw that the opposite side could actually equal the same length as the hypotenuse for those quadrantal angles. However, the opposite side should never be larger than the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And so therefore, there's no angle that exists that gives you a sine ratio equal to 3 halves. That's it for this lesson.